Hello everyone, welcome to Fort Megs. My name is John and this is Dan, staff members here at the Fort. As you know, Fort Megs is gonna serve the Northwest Army during the War of 1812. That is our time period. And today, in a little exploration of the uniform, we are talking about neckwear for soldiers and civilians at the time. Mm -hmm. In the early 1800s, it was common for a gentleman to wear what's called a neck stock. Um, in the civilian world, it would be a piece of leather or some kind of a stiffener uh, wrapped in cloth. This one in particular is wrapped in silk, so it kind of shows your status in society. If it was just a plain cloth, you'd be of, of lower stature, but even common workmen would all be wearing some sort of a neck cloth around, around their throat. Um, it is the predecessor of today's necktie. And when gentlemen were outdoors, outside of the home, they would be expected to wear this. Um, serves the same purpose as a necktie today, which is nothing, strictly for looks. Uh, there's no practical purpose to it whatsoever, other than fashion. And the fashion of the time will translate in, into the military and the uniform at the time. So this is an example of the soldier's neck stock. It is a very stiff, very heavy leather and emblazoned with the American eagle here in the front. It serves the purpose of uh, gaining a soldier a high collar on their innermost uh, linen hunting shirt. High collar is the, is the fashion of the time. And so the coatees will have the high collar, the vest as well. And now your linen undershirt is gonna have a high collar. But it's also gonna serve to keep a soldier's posture very upright. Um, so they uh, look very formidable, very dashing, uh, especially on an attack or on the battlefield. A soldier cannot shrug. They cannot show fear by wincing away from incoming fire. So the next stock is going to make the soldier uh, very adroit, very tough looking. Mm -hmm. And all members of the military were expected to wear their stocks except for the sailors on board ships. The enlisted sailors uh, did not have to wear stocks like this because it does inhibit the movement of your head. And when they're trying to climb the rigging and look around the ship, uh, it can really be a hindrance. The officers would still uh, wear their cloth wrapped stocks. The Marines stationed on board these ships to act as snipers were still required to wear their, their neck stocks. And the, the sailors made fun of the Marines. They called them leathernecks. And the term has stuck to this day. Mm -hmm. Now there is a myth that these leather neck stocks would protect your throat from saber cuts and things like that. But we know that that is not the case. In our museum today, we actually have an original neck stock worn by a gentleman who was killed at the Battle of Brownstown in the Michigan Territory in the late fall of 1812. A piece of buckshot hit him in the neck, and the opening for that buckshot is still visible in the neck stock today. Mm -hmm. So we know that it did not really offer very much protection for the throat. Uh, that is, is a good story that it would uh, save you from, from saber blows to the, to the throat, but honestly, I think that's a bit of a myth. And we want to make sure that everyone uh, knows the real truth and that all myths of history are dispelled. So thanks for joining us today, a little trip through the neckwear of the early 19th century. If you have thoughts on these uh, topics, include them in the comments below. You can check out our website, fortmegs.org, and come out to the fort if you're able and visit us in person. So we'll see you again. Thanks very much for tuning in.